The Bible says that God commands all men everywhere to repent. Because there's coming a day in which He's going to judge the world in righteousness. And let's face it, most of you are not ready. Most of you are not ready. The Bible says that God will condemn fornicators to the lake of fire. That's those having sex outside of marriage. And because we're at a college campus this morning, I know for a fact that there's lots and lots of fornicators here at USF. Lots and lots. And the Bible says that all fornicators shall have their part in the lake of fire. Is your fornication that important to you? Is your, for, your sex outside of marriage that precious to you that you'll go to hell for all eternity for it? I hope not. You said yes, young man? Well, I pity you then. You'll, you'll take a little bit of pleasure for a season and trade it for eternal torment. That's what sinners do. All the sexual morality in the world runs rampant at college campus across the U.S. Whether it's sex outside of marriage, or it's porn watching, or just lustful thoughts as the immodestly dressed people walk by you, or it's homosexuality and sodomy uh, or masturbation whatever those sexual sins are that is run rampant at college campuses and God condemns them all God condemns every last one of those sexually immoral acts whether it's fornication or porn watching or uh, sodomy and homosexuality or masturbation whatever your sins are the Bible says that God condemns it. And God's going to cast sinners into the lake of fire. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have committed in an ungodly way. And of all the harsh things ungodly sinners have spoken against him. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ will do when he comes back. The scripture also says, Behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven. And all the proud, yes, all who do wickedly, shall be stubble. And the day which is coming shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts. Not going to be a pretty day when Jesus comes back, at least not for sinners. Not going to be a pretty day. Because the Bible says that God is angry with the wicked every day. God is not pleased with your wicked life. God is not pleased with your sexual immorality and your drunkenness. God is not pleased with your hot smoking, your immodest dress. I love coming to a place where there's warmer weather. But you know one thing I hate about it? All the immodestly dressed people walking around. Thinking because a little bit warmer, I can wear less clothes and wear tight clothes and wear revealing clothes. Clothes that are so tight, like another layer of skin. Clothes that are so revealing, you're revealing parts of your body only your husband or wife should see. Well, if you're convicted, young lady, you don't deal with it properly. Not flip the preacher off, but get rid of your sin. Get rid of your sin. If you're revealing your body and every Tom, Dick, and Harry around you let a lust after you, you're ungodly in the way you dress. If you're, the way your dress is causing people to lust after you, you're ungodly in the way you dress. And you need to repent. The Bible says a godly woman and a godly man will dress modestly. What's so funny about that? God expects you to do something. God expects you to live a certain way. And you won't be laughing in his face on Judgment Day when he's standing before you with eyes of fire and a double-edged sword coming out of his mouth. Won't be laughing then for sinners. The Bible says, Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter turn to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself in the sight of God and he will lift you up. You need humble. You need humility. You need mourning. You need lamentation. Not laughter. You sinners laugh at your own demise. 
You should just laugh at your own destruction. But you won't be laughing when it comes. You won't be laughing when it comes. And God is merciful towards you, patient with you, not wanting you to perish, wanting you to come to repentance. The Bible says, Do you despise the riches of His goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance, but according with your hardness and your impenitent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in a day of wrath, and the revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who are under each one according to His deeds. Eternal light to those who by patient continuance and doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish on every soul of man who does evil. If you're doing evil today, you're in great danger. You're in big trouble. God is not happy with you. God is not your friend. Jesus isn't your friend if you're a sinner. The Bible never says Jesus is a friend of sinners. That's an accusation made against him by the Pharisees, by his enemies. They also accuse him of being a wine bibber. That's not true. Jesus Christ is only, always holy. He wasn't a friend of sinners. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. And the Bible says sinners are enemies of God. The Bible says adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know? That friendship with the world is enmity with God? Jesus Christ isn't a friend of the world, otherwise he'd be the enemy of the Father. Jesus Christ is coming back to bring his garment stained with blood, with the blood of his enemies. And he stomps out the grapes of wrath. He doesn't know your pastors aren't teaching you these things. But the fact of the matter is, Christ is going to return. He's no longer a baby in the manger. He's no longer in the nativity scene. He's no longer even on the cross. He's coming back as a king to destroy his enemies. And it's not going to be a pretty battle. Not going to be a battle at all. Not even going to be a fight. Because God in the flesh is coming back to destroy his enemies. Better get what God say. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. If you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Christ commands all sinners to repent. Christ commands all sodomites to become straight. All sodomites, Christ can straighten you out. He's the kind of man you can love. Because sodomites don't love men, they lust after men. But Christ can fix a sodomite. Change him from a pervert to being normal. Christ can change a fornicator, a heterosexual fornicator, from being sexy and moral to being pure. Christ can change a liar to an honest person. Christ can change a thief to a content person. But the question is, are you willing to come? Are you willing to give up your sin? Give up your immodest dress? Give up your vanity? Give up your selfishness and your sin? And humble yourself and come to Christ? Are you willing to do that? The Bible says, draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinner. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter return to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself in the sight of God and He will lift you up. That's what you need to do. To humble yourself before God and He will lift you up. Humility takes you realizing you're a, you're a hell-deserving sinner. You need to realize if you're a drunkard, if you get drunk, you're a hell-deserving sinner. Every time you put your butt dumber to your lips and guzzle it down, or your miller with low light to your lips and guzzle it down, you show you hate God and love your sin. Every time. Every time you bring the doobie to your lips, take a puff of it, and get high, you show you hate God and love your sin. Every time you have sex outside of marriage with your boyfriend or girlfriend, maybe a complete stranger, you show you hate God and love your sin. Every time we tell a lie, whether it's a white lie, a half-truth, a fib, or a big black lie, you, you, you show everyone around you you hate God and you love your sin. The Bible says lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal truthfully are His delight. The Bible says every liar shall have his part in the lake of fire. Every liar. 
Doesn't matter if it's a white lie, a half truth, a fib, or a big fat lie. Every liar shall have his part in a lake of fire. That's you. You tell these little white lies to your parents, to your friends. Yes, sinner. That's you. You're in big trouble. Do you think it doesn't matter? Well, God is watching. God sees it. God hears it. There is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom must give an account. That's right. The Bible says his eyes are on the ways of man, and he sees all his steps. There is no darkness nor shadow of death where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. You sinners have nowhere to hide. The NSA is God. What's that, sinner? NSA is God. No, sinner. God is God. NSA is a bunch of humans trying to be God. And just like you, sinner, who try to be God of your own life. They try to be God of your life, but you try to be God of your own life. Every time you sin against God, you shake your fist at God and say, I will not have you to rule over me. That's what you're doing. You try to be the God of your own life, but you're not suitable to be God. You're not fit to be God. You're not smart enough to be God. Only God is. And God commands you to live a certain way. Why won't you obey Him? Why won't you stop your sinning and obey God? Why don't you follow Jesus Christ in righteousness? He commands you to awake unto righteousness and sin not, the Bible says. Do not sin. The Bible says, he who sins is of the devil. So who are you? Are you a, a child of God? Or are you a child of the devil? In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. Nor is he who does not love his brother. Yes, sinners are on their way to hell. Even the Christian sinners are on their way to hell. God bless you, Lord. Even the Christian sinners, the Christian sinners are on their way to hell. Because you don't you show by your sin you don't know God. Now by this we know that we know him. If we keep his commandments. He who says I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. You say you know God? Well, show me the proof. Show me the proof you actually know God. If you're sinning, you prove the opposite. You prove you don't know God if you're sinning. But the Bible says, you claim to know God, but you're sinning. You're not keeping His commandments. You prove you don't know God. By your lying. By your lust. By your porn watching. By your drunkenness. By your filthy mouth. You know, Jesus said... Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good things. An evil man, out of the evil treasure, brings forth evil things. But I say unto you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give an account of it on the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Jesus says, by their fruit you shall know them. Yeah, we know what kind of person you are by your fruit. We see an, an apple tree, an orange tree. We know it's an orange tree, an apple tree, by the fruit that comes off of its branches. And we know if you're a child of God or not by what kind of fruit of your life. Are you a sinner? Are you still sinning? You're not a child of God. You need to forsake your sin. The Bible says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. In Christ I am. In Christ I am. No, I'm not a sinner. I'm a former sinner. No, I obey God. I'm perfect in Christ. Christ is the only one who never sinned. Not the only one who's not sinning now. I've sinned in the past. I don't sin anymore. You keep going back to that, but you're, you're redefining the word perfect to catch me in my words like a Pharisee. The word perfect doesn't... I, when I say Jesus Christ is perfect, I'm saying that he's never sinned. If I say God's perfect, I'm saying he's never sinned. If I say a human being is perfect, I'm saying they're not sinning now. They've repented of all their sins. So you don't believe in the, in the, in the true meaning of repentance? Yes, I do. I've turned from sin. I've changed my mind, I've changed my heart, and I decide I'll do it again. You don't believe in the true meaning of repentance. You yeah. think of sin, repent, sin, repent, sin, repent, sin, repent. When then what's the problem? Do you have sin in your life right now? I do. Well, then you haven't repented. When you sin repent, repent then God forgives you and never remembers the 
No, the Bible never says God has a bad memory. God doesn't forget your sin. You're saying you know more about things than God does? You're more knowledgeable about your sin? He doesn't forget it. He forgets it. He's not going to bring it up. If you truly repent, He will forgive you of your sin. But if you're still walking in sin, you haven't repented. If you're still walking in the same sin. No, any sin. You haven't repented. No. What sin do you have in your life in way that you can't stop doing? Tell me about this. Say, say, it, say, I, say I was yelling at my brother. That's Who says yelling's a sin? Who says yelling is not loving? Where does the Bible say that? So, you're, so you twist God's commandments? I didn't twist anything. You're the one who can't give me a Bible verse for what you're saying. Where does the Bible say that yelling's a sin? It says love one another. Says Where does the Bible say yelling is not loving? Where does the Bible say porn's a sin? What's that? Where does the Bible say porn's a sin? Well, the Bible said if you look upon a woman with lust in your heart for her, you've already committed adultery in your heart. And that's what you're doing when you look at porn. You're lust, 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 lust. How can you want, 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 want. How can you judge him and say he's lusting after a woman when he looks at him? Because he's watching pornography. How can you How say you that? That's what Listen, young lady, you, you, you need to use common sense. Are you God? You use common sense. I used to be a porn watcher myself, so I know what sinners do when they look at pornography. I'm not stupid. You can't judge him. The only says who? You can judge him is God. Says who? God. Where does the Bible say that? He says don't judge one another. Where, where does it say that? Don't but, see, this is, a, this is a perfect example of the professing Christians I run to all the time. They'll make several comments that they can't back up with one Bible verse, and then they walk away in disgust. Give me a Bible verse for it. Yes, young man, pornography is a sin. If you're engaged in it, you're in big trouble. Not only that, think about what you're doing to the people who are engaged. Have you ever like, looked into what people go through who are involved in pornography? What it does to their life? How short their life is? How they get involved in drugs and suicide? and they get mistreated, and they get all kinds of STDs and STIs. It's not all pretty like it is on the screen for you. It's not all pretty like it is. You treat those women and those men like they're pieces of meat to gratify your wicked lust. They're human beings made in God's image. They're someone's daughter, someone's sister, maybe it's someone's mother, someone's brother, someone's father, someone's son, and you don't care about that. All you care about is you're gratifying your wicked lust. How selfish can you be? Like a dog in heat. Yeah. How about you think about someone else for a second? Stop thinking about yourself. I never said it was. Oh, you're looking at pornography. You smiled about it. You know you do. Tap your feet all you like in nervousness. You probably masturbate to it too. Right? Damn right. See? At least, she, at least he's being honest. You're cowering away now. You spoke up and, woohoo, I'm looking at pornography. Like it's still kind of fun thing. It's wicked. It's disgusting. It's filthy. Those people are made in God's image. And how dare you treat them like a piece of meat in a market to be chewed up and spit out? How dare you? You have no idea how these people get into the porn force. A lot of them get into it. I do. I've researched it. I've researched it. I do. I do. I've researched it. I care about them. I don't lust after them. I care about them and want them to be saved. But I used to be all right like a lot of you. But not anymore. Because God's changed me. There's a lady, I don't agree with everything she says, but her name is Annie Lobert. She used to be in the porn industry. Go read her book. Go read testimony after testimony of people who have come out of pornography and see what they say about it. It's disgusting and filthy. Things done to them I wouldn't want done to a dog. Done to human beings. And you people think it's, it's just fun to type it on the internet, click, 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 let me pull my pants down, let me masturbate to it. You think it's just fun and games. You, you show how wicked and filthy you are by cheering that on. I, I hope and pray, young man, that your future daughter has not become a porn star so you realize the reality of what you're putting people through by supporting this disgusting filth we call pornography. What's that? What'd you say, young man? Yeah, you show how much of a filthy, filthy human you are. You're not even, you're not even fit to be called a human if those kind of words come out of your mouth. Matthew 7, verse 3. What's that? Matthew chapter 7, verse 3. What's your interpretation? Well, you got to read the whole context. Matthew 7, 1 through 5. Okay, well, yeah, so if, I, if someone has sin in their life, a beam of sin in their life, they have to take that out first before they take the speck out of someone else's eye. That took my beam out a long time ago. So I'm fit, according to verse 5, to judge you. 
Hey, listen, if I had sin in my life and I was judging you, I'd be a hypocrite on my way to hell. But I'm not. Let's talk about context here. I, fo context. I follow Jesus Christ. I keep his commandments. And that's the very thing you need to do. Restore him gently. And you know what? Jesus He's not a brother. I'm not restoring him gently. He's not my brother. And he doesn't need restoration. He's a sinner. Sinners, that's who Jesus came for. He came to seek and save the lost. Yes, that's what I'm doing now, sinner. He said, restore the gently. You have that's no not what it says. That's in James. No, it's not. Absolutely that's not, not about I sinners. That's you. about Christians who have fallen away from the faith. Pull out the Bible verse. Pull it out, sinner. Pull out the Bible verse. Pull out the Bible verse. Pull out the Bible verse. I thought you'd run away, sinner, you coward. I thought you'd run away, you coward. Pull out the Bible verse. Let's see what it says. Let's see what the context says. I knew you'd run away, you coward. I knew you'd run away. You're, you're, a, you're a run and gun. You're a, you're a drive-by shooter. You, you don't have any context for that scripture. Yes, if someone who's a Christian is, is found to be in sin, and they're found to be in sin, and they're humble themselves, I'm going to restore them gently. Because God gives grace to the humble, but he opposes the proud. But I haven't seen any humble people yet. I've seen proud, boastful people boasting for pornography, boasting for disgusting filth. You'll give an account for those words, man. You have no fear of God before your eyes. You need to get some fear of God before your eyes. You, you will be scared on Judgment Day, sinner. You, see, your problem is you think delayed judgment means the absence of it. But God's judgment is coming. The delay in his judgment is not due to him being absent-minded or being uh, or giving into it and saying it's okay. It's, he's being merciful towards you. He's being patient with you. Wanting you to come to repentance. Not wanting you to perish. That's the patience of God. But many of you say, well, where's the, where's the, time, the signs of his coming? He's been gone for 2,000 years. Where is he? Yeah, well, wait till he comes. He'll go across the sky and he'll judge the wicked and cast them to the lake of fire. Where's the lake of fire? You'll find out someday. You'll find out someday. Just because you don't know where a place is, I mean, it doesn't exist. Just because you've never seen a place, that means it does not exist. Hey, young man, do you, do you know where um, you know where breeding is? The city called Breeding. Do you know where that is? I'm asking you a question. Do you know where breeding is? Well, then I guess according to you, it doesn't exist, right? Because you don't know where it is. You ever been to Australia? I guess it doesn't exist because you've never been there. You've never seen it with your own two eyes. I don't have to see something to know it exists. I don't have to be somewhere to know it exists. I don't have to know where it is to know it exists. God says it exists, and that's all the proof I need. That's all the proof I need. Gehenna does exist. Gehenna does. I don't have to know where it is, young man. I've already explained that to you. You don't know where breathing is, so it must not exist, but I live there. So I know it exists. I didn't say I was from Australia, sin. I said I was from breathing. But you don't know where it is. No, I know it exists because God says. No, I know. God says it, I know it. God says it, I know it. God is all-knowing. He's all-powerful. He says something is ex exists, it does exist. That's all there is to it. It literally makes... I didn't say that's why I believe in God. When did I say I believe in God because He says so? Well, there's lots of reasons why I believe in God. The main reason is the impossibility of the contrary. I just told you the impossibility of the contrary. It's impossible for God not to exist. I couldn't make, I couldn't make sense of reality if God didn't exist. There, there'd be no, there'd be no morality. There'd be no justice. There'd be no relationships. There'd be no logic. There'd be no science. There'd be no uniformity of nature. If God didn't exist, we wouldn't have any of those things. We have people engaged in science all the time and say God doesn't exist. Nonsense. No, no, so you're not, you're not thinking it through. You're not using your mind, young lady. What is science based upon? 
It's based upon your five senses working properly. It's based upon uniformity of nature. It's based upon the principle of induction. But those three things wouldn't even be reliable or trustworthy or even exist without God existing. If an intelligent being didn't create this universe, including you, you would have no reason to trust your five senses ever worked. No reason to trust the reliability of your senses at all. If you're put together by millions of years of no intelligence, just chance random mutations that come together and adaptation, you would have no reason to believe your senses ever worked properly. But you trust them every day. You trust they work. You engage in science, which requires uniformity of nature. But how do you know that nature is uniform? You assume it's uniform, and you test from that. You, you also believe in the principle of induction, which you can't prove either. You assume these things. But these things only make sense in the context of an intelligent desire, designer, intelligent being who created everything. Yes, that's true. Is false accusation a sin? I haven't made any false accusations. But you have. How defensive. No, I haven't. Are you sure? I am sure. You have perfect knowledge? I don't have to have perfect knowledge. All I have to have knowledge of is what I've said. Okay. And I know I haven't made any false accusations. Are you making a false accusation about me making a false accusation? I Well, I guess you're the sinner again. Not me. If, young man, you should guilt your porn. Stop making excuses for yourself. Stop watching pornography. Stop all of your sinning and follow Jesus. Wait, you said if you stop, if you repent of an act and you don't do it, you're fine, right? No, that's not it. Okay, what, what else? That's only part of it. you got to trust in Jesus Christ and become born again of the Holy Spirit. Well, if you have, at the least, you're backslidden. I'm a what? If you have done that in the past truly and become born again, yeah. at the least, right now, you're backslidden. You might be a reprobate right now. What, what do you mean by a, what? a Reprobate or a backslider. What, what's a backslider? A backslider is someone who's departing from the faith. They go back to their sins. They go back to the, the vomit of their sins and the muck and mire of their sins. I haven't accused you of anything. I, I said what came out of your mouth. No, you did accuse me of I asked you where it was in the Bible. You heard it. No, no, no. You laughed about it and you cheered about it. I laughed about it. And you cheered about it, which means you support it. You did cheer. You're a liar. I cheered. You cheered. No, you, you cheered with him. You did so. I laughed because you were falsely No, you cheered with him. I laughed because you're falsely I didn't falsely accuse you of anything, young man. You know it. Your conscience, your, your conscience is bothering you because you know what I'm saying is true. And you know, I'm talking to him, not you. I'm talking to him. You need to forsake all your sins. All of them. No matter what they are, whether it's pornography or masturbation or pot smoking or getting drunk. Well, then you're not right with God. You're not right with God. You haven't repented of it. You haven't repented of it. What's that? Well, there you go. You have it. You end up in hell in the end, too. What do you think of gay? Oh, I like happy people. What do you think of homosexuals? They're on their way to hell. I love them enough to tell them the truth. Sodomites, lesbians, bisexuals are all on their way to hell. But God can straighten them out. God can make them a new creature. Well, that's part of your problem. That's the reason why you're a pervert. You're a pervert. You've corrupted yourself. You've defiled yourself. You just stop it. God can give you a new mind and a new heart if you'll repent of your sins and follow Him. You know, in the city of Corinth, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11, there were former homosexuals in that city, and they became Christians. So you're not born that way. No one made you be that way. You chose to be that way. Or maybe you were molested. Or maybe your father wasn't there. Maybe they didn't teach you the Bible like they should have. No, you're not good. You're a sinner. You're unrighteous. You're defiled. You're corrupted. You're perverted. You're an abomination before God. What's that? No, 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 sinner. No, see, see, my sexual activity, see, I'm married. I have, I, have, I have seven children. 
I'm not sexually frustrated at all because my sin doesn't condemn me like your sin does. See, my sexual activity is within the God's boundaries. So it doesn't condemn me. But yours does condemn me. That's why you're frustrated with what I'm saying. No, sinner, I'm not. See, the problem with you sodomites, you think that the answer to everything is some kind of sexual act. It's kind of fun, so I don't know. Won't be fun in hell. Won't be any sodomy in hell. Won't be any sodomy in hell. Won't be any drinking in hell. Won't be getting high in hell. Just pain and torment in hell. That's all for sinners. Just pain and torment forever and ever 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 you get it and ever come on with me and ever and ever and ever and ever I hope that reverberates through your brain the rest of the day so you realize how long you'll be in hell if you don't repent I hope you get right with God God can even save a pervert God can save a pervert. God can save a sodomite and make him straight. That's how powerful God is. Well, you're not, you're not gay. You're not happy. You're miserable, blind, wretched, and naked. But you are a sinner. It's a figurative term, young man. Yeah. It's okay. I'm glad you do now. Did I go to a Christian college? Well, I became a Christian when I was 19. So I wasn't raised in a Christian household. I didn't have Christian parents. I didn't go to church when I was younger. Except for a Roman Catholic church, which doesn't really count. Uh, it's not Christian. That's why it doesn't count. Uh, but I became a Christian at 19. Yes, I did go to a Christian college. But it was when I was like 20 years old. What was that what, you have some against Christian colleges? What's wrong with Christian colleges? What do you have against them? Wait a minute now. You went to a Christian school for seven years and expected not to be taught their beliefs? No, Sounds like you had a wrong expectation, young lady. Well, then I guess you talk to your parents about that, right? That's your parents' choice. Well, of course not. The Bible is very intolerant of other beliefs. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. So Jesus Christ said, so of course there's no other way. Islam is wrong. Buddhism is wrong. Hinduism is wrong. Mormonism is wrong. The Watchtower of Jehovah's Witness is wrong. Uh, all those are wrong. But Jesus Christ is right. So of course, I mean, if your parents love you and your teachers love you, they're going to tell you the truth. They're not going to tell you all this stuff that's not true. What's that? Written by holy men inspired by God. That's the claim. Where's the proof? Is divinely inspired? Because men would say things in the scripture, prophecies that had not happened yet, happened hundreds, even thousands of years later. There's no way a man could know that. There's no way. We have the Bible. We have we have we have manuscripts. No, these are events in history that no one disputes. There are ignorant sinners who want to dispute these things. What's 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 what are you disputing? Are you disputing? What's that? Everything. What? Okay, well, give me an example. What what have I said today that you're disputing that happened in history? Okay, let's deal with that. First of all, I didn't say everyone was a sinner. I've never said those words until right now. Those words never came out of my mouth today. No, it's not. I got video proof, video evidence of that. No, I didn't. I haven't said everyone's a sinner. No, I didn't. I never said everyone's going to hell. That would put me in hell. I never said everyone's a sinner that make me a sinner, and that's not true. I know he's not a sinner, he's not going to hell. I know he's not a sinner, not going to hell. I know he's not a sinner, not going to hell. I know he's not a sinner over there, not going to hell. So I didn't say that. You're a liar. You have your father, the devil, who's a father of lies. You are a sinner. You are on your way to hell. I know that for a fact. Just by what's come out of your mouth today. Because by your, by your mouth, go know your heart. 
buy your food, you shall know them. Let's go back to this other part here about not knowing where hell is. I've never been there. Young man, have you ever been to Australia? Uh, no, then I guess it doesn't exist according to you. You've never been there, right? Yeah, what proof do you have? Australia. Yeah, okay, so... Uh, so I know the person who made hell. What's your point? You know the person that made hell. That's right. I know the person who made hell. You know someone who lives in Australia. I know the person who made hell, and you're telling me I can't know it exists? I can't know it exists? So I know hell exists, and I know you're going on your way there right now because God tells me. That's how I know that. Well, he talks to me every day. I talk to him every day. We have a relationship. I have his I have his word, which also speaks to me. Oh, no, see, now, my mind isn't in the gutter like you, sinner. I don't think of it like that. See, I can, I can have a love relationship with another man without sticking something up his butt. Okay? I can have a love relationship with another man without sticking something up his butt. It doesn't have to be up his butt. Whatever it is. It doesn't have to be sexual. In fact, I would say if you're doing that, it's not love at all. It's just lust. Just wickedness. What's the problem with lust? Yes. It sends you to hell. Yeah. Well, what's the problem with hell? Well, I guess you'll find out when you get there. What if the world that we're living on is hell? No, that's not it because you're not in torment and pain right now and you're a sinner. Why? Because the Bible says sinners will go to hell and saints won't go to hell. I'm a saint and I'm here, so it's not hell. You're a sinner and you're not in torment, so it's not hell. What if I don't believe in hell? Well, you, your lack of belief in Jesus does not make him poof go away. Doesn't disappear because you don't believe in them anymore. I mean, try that. Try doing that on I-95 on the Eastern Coast. Well, that 18-wheeler, it doesn't exist. I don't care if it runs me over. It doesn't exist. Jesus Christ is more real than an 18-wheeler. Muhammad's a false prophet and a pedophile. Why does he consider a false prophet? Because he prophesied falsely. Because he said things that were not true. Well, you can make that claim, but where's your proof? Where's yours? I just told you. He put a book that may have just been written by a bunch of disciples that is like the common word of everybody. There's been tons of tons of works that have been like, okay, hey, we'll bring a couple people together and we'll write this down. And hey, we'll spread it off to everybody who wants to listen. It doesn't mean that it's real. That's ignorant conjecture, man. That's historical revisionism. You have no idea what you're talking about. You have no idea how the Bible came together. You have no idea how it was as it became God's word. You have no idea. Yes, I am narrow-minded. What's wrong with that? Are you narrow-minded to my narrow-mindedness? Did I guess you're narrow-minded? No, you're not. You're not open-minded to my narrow-mindedness. You're closed-minded to my narrow-mindedness. You narrow-minded hypocrite. Wait a minute now. Are you chained down by the ankle right there? Did someone make you stop? Then no one's shoving it down your throat. Walk away if you want to. You're shoving it down your own throat by sitting here listening to me. It's a public campus, sinner! You don't, you don't own the campus. You don't own the campus. You don't own the campus. No one wants you talking. I don't care what they want. I don't care what you want or your lesbian friends want. I don't care what you want or any sinners want. I care what God wants. That's what I care. How would you know if I know God, you filthy mouth sinner? How would you know if I know God? You're not fit to say anything about God with that potty in your mouth. I have no hate coming out of my mouth. Just love and rebuke. Well, you know what? Truth sounds like hate to those who hate the truth, and that's you. You hate the truth. You hate Jesus Christ, and you hate everything he stands for. That's why you hate God. Nope. I don't do that. That's why. Says who? Where did you say that? Yeah. Where? I'm loving you right now by telling you the truth. I sure am. You know what Jesus said? Jesus said in Revelation 3.19, As many as I love, 
I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and repent. Ephesians 5.11 says this, Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Proverbs 27.5 says, Open rebuke is better than love carefully concealed. I love how you're picking and choosing just different different parts of the text. I mean, What's wrong with that? I, I mean, seriously, you're picking and choosing. Right? Spin and manipulate your own stories. I'm not spinning and manipulating anything, man. That's what the Bible says. If you can show me from the Bible that I'm wrong, then prove it to me. But you can't. I respect your own opinion. Have you ever read the Bible? The whole Bible. No, I didn't think so. So who are you to educate me in the Bible when I've read the whole thing through about 50 times? I don't have to read the Quran, but I have read it. I have read it. I have read it. When is it that you met God? When did you end up meeting Jesus? Well, when I was 19 years old, I became a Christian. Before that, I was a lot like you. I was a potty mouth, fornicator, porn watcher, uh, lustful, a liar, a thief. Welcome to hormones. No, that's welcome to sin that sends you to hell. It's not a part of your nature. No one, got, no one wants you to be a sinner. God doesn't want you to be a sinner. It's not natural and no one to be a sinner. But you know what? Jesus Christ changed me, and that's how I know he can change you. Okay, fair enough. I still believe that you're a sinner right now. No. Have you ever have you sinned within the past week? No. The past month? Really? So you're perfect. Oh, that take a lot more thought, young man. I'm not saying that there's no any time in which so. there may have just been one or two instances where you may have sinned. Because the guy over there I was speaking to, apparently it's been a year and more, and he's been like, oh no, I haven't sinned. Well, praise the Lord. What's wrong with that? We all make mistakes. What, I mean, like, wait a minute now. Now you change the word. First you were talking about sin, now you're talking about mistakes. Sin's not a mistake, and mistake's not a sin. Sin is rebellion against God. A mistake is tripping over a crack in the sidewalk. A mistake is making a jump on your skateboard and you're missing it and falling on your face. A mistake is getting an answer wrong on a test. Sin is not a mistake. Sin is rebellion against God. So don't don't conflate those two things together. Okay? But I feel like we all have we all have at least the tendency to sin every once in a while. No, not tendency. No, you choose to sin. Now I'll give you this thing, man. Once you start choosing to sin, certain sins become addictive. And so it becomes a lot easier to think your body needs it and you should be doing it like pornography, drugs, it's like alcohol. Lie. It's like a lie. You can start off with a simple white lie. And it leads to the next lie, and the next lie, and the next... Can I, no, I haven't memorized the Quran. I don't spend time memorizing the Quran. I memorize the scriptures. I mean, at the very least, maybe like one or two parts of the Quran. I can't quote any of it. That's interesting. Maybe you can choose one simple religious text, but maybe, hey, you know what? There's value. That are Let me say this. When someone says a text is from God, but it's riddled with problems and holes and contradictions, I spend no more time with it. Welcome to the Holy Bible. Okay, well, prove it to me. I knew you were going to say that. Now, prove it to me. Give me one problem in the Bible. Hey, you don't even now. You just said a second ago. These are your words. It's riddled with holes. Right? Now, give me one. I mean, there's so many of them. Just give me one. You can't. I knew you wouldn't be able to. No one does. Anyone who asks me, anyone who says that kind of stuff, it's just ignorant conjecture is all it is. You can't give me one word. You can go Google it if you want in the, in the library, or get your smartphone out and find it, and you'll find a list from atheist websites. But I can deal with those things as well. So what I find is people come to the Bible trying to find mistakes in it when there's none in there. Hold on, I'm talking to him right now. I'll get to you back in a minute. What? I have it written down. I have it written down, but I don't have it with me. But I can give it to you later on if you. I can give it to you if you hey, listen. If you contact me, I can give it to you later on. Yeah, give me my card. Here you go. Do it, right here. My website's on the back. The bottom corner there. What's your name? Angel. Ironically, Angel. Enough. You know, angel is Greek. Angel Noel, funny enough, and I'm agnostic. So. Okay, well, angel, angel in the Greek means messenger. So you are a messenger, not a messenger of God right now. But hopefully, angel, you'll become a messenger of God someday. He, please don't. Why not? What do you have against messengers of God? What do you have against messengers of God? That's great. Well, so says the sinner. 
So this is the potty mouth sinner. Of course you don't like me. Because I stand against sin. I stand up for righteousness. I stand up for Jesus Christ and his word. Of course you're not going to like it. Of course you're going to be biased in your representation of me or anyone else the messenger of God. I am. But I'm the right team. But I'm the right team. And, and you know what? If you claim to be a Christian, you should be biased too. You did a little while ago. Which means you're a Christian, but different than me. So you don't claim to be a Christian? No, I'm agnostic too. Okay. You know the word agnostic is the Greek form of that is ignoramus? You realize that? I'm just letting you, I'm just letting you know the facts. I'm not calling your name. I'm just letting you know the facts. Agnostic means A negates. Gnosis means knowledge. means I don't know. Let me give you some knowledge. Jesus Christ came to die for you on the cross. Agnostic means I don't know. That's what it means. Guys, I know we need a time machine. I think we need to go back in time. What's wrong with that? Well, you need to find out the truth. Jesus Christ is the truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What's that? There is no truth? Wait, 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 hold on. Wait, wait. wait a minute, wait a minute. There is no truth? Is that true? Is that true? Is that true? So if there is no truth, it's not true, then there is truth. It's a self-defeating position to say there is no truth is a truth statement about truth, and now you defeated your own position. It's like saying all truth is relative. Well, is that relative? Well, maybe all truth isn't relative then. Is that relative? Then all truth isn't relative. You're, you're, you know, you students here who are learning relativism and agnosticism, you just defeat yourself by your own position. You're self-defeating. It's not even worth it philosophically to even believe this is a thing. Why you would do that, I have no idea. The only consistent intellectual position is Christianity. That's it. Agnosticism fails, atheism fails, all the positions fail. Horribly. Well, you know, if you're a sinner and you like something, it's probably no good for you. Probably no good for you. Unless you're repenting of your sin, then you, you probably have a better judgment from your mind. But if you're a sinner and you like something, it's probably no good for you. Because sin is never any. Sin leads to death. Sin leads to destruction. The Bible says if you sow to please the flesh, you'll reap corruption. If you sow to please the spirit, you'll reap everlasting life. Why do we have to be so fearful? You don't have to be so fearful. If you're a sinner, you have every reason to be fearful of God. But as a Christian, the only thing I fear is going back to my sin. No, not, not according to the Bible. The Bible says that he who sins of the devil, that the Bible says. Christians live holy lives. They obey God. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So if someone comes to you and says, I'm a Christian, but they're sinning every day, they're liars. They're liars. What's that? Sure, there's a possibility philosophically that I'm a hypocrite, but I'm not. And you don't have to believe me. I don't, it doesn't really matter to me whether you believe me or not. I know God knows, and I know, and the people who know me the best know. Uh, so, but it, the Bible says, now by this we know that we know him, talking about Jesus. Now by this we know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and truth is not in him. So if you keep his commandments, you prove you know him, you prove you love him. You prove you have a real relationship with him. But if you're not, you prove you're a liar if you say you know him. Yes, young man. I don't believe either one of those things. That's a false dichotomy. I don't believe either one of those things. Well, I believe that as a Christian, I became born again back when I was 19. Okay, about 17 years ago now. Almost 18. Since then, to my own shame, I have sinned since then. I have. I have. Since then, I have sinned to my own shame. Now, if I would have died in that state, I would have went to hell. Okay, because I've backslidden, I've departed from the faith, I've gone back to my sin. Um, but I need to repent again to get forgiveness again. That's not becoming born again again. You only become born again once. If you repent, no, no, if, if, you, if, you are, if you're in your sins, you're not, you have no security. 
Uh, 1 John 3, 18 through 19 says, uh, uh, My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And by this we know we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before Him. So if someone wants assurance of salvation, they don't base it upon some prayer they prayed. They base it upon if they're living for God or not. In, in deed and in truth, not just word and in tongue. Anyone can say they're a Christian. But by your fruit you shall know them. You know, Jesus said, He who hears my sayings and does them, I will liken him to someone who built his house upon the rock. If someone who hears my sayings does not do them, I will liken him to someone who built his house upon the sand. So, uh, Christians have the ability to sin. They have the temptation to sin, but they shouldn't be sinning at all. And if they do, they need to repent. And the Bible says, uh, Whoever confesses sins will find mercy. They'll be cleansed of all unrighteousness. Can okay. You Yes, I can. Again? Yep. Really? Yeah. That's Took two semesters of it in college, and I continued to study on my own. Now, now I couldn't, I couldn't, um, I couldn't go to a Greek text and just start translating without any tools. I need tools to translate it, but, but I can read it. I can read it. I can, I can, you know, pronounce all the words, and I know I have a pretty good vocabulary, a pretty good idea of the grammar and stuff like that. But you've read the King James version, right? No, I read New King James. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. This is a translation. No, no, it's, that's not. Anyway, we're just translating. Well, actually, the Old Testament was originally written in Hebrew. No, the Old Testament was originally written in Hebrew. No, I'm not. The Old Testament was originally written in Hebrew, New Testament in Greek. Some of the Old Testament is in Aramaic. There is an Old Testament in Greek, but it was much later on, around 3rd century B.C. Uh, so I, I can read the Old Testament in Greek as well. Uh, but uh, I have no problem with the Greek. Now, if I come to a translation, I don't believe any translation is perfect. There can, there can be, there can be, hold on, let me state my position so you understand where I'm coming from, okay? Let me state my position. So you understand where I'm coming from so you can respond to it properly without Mr. So you are conceding that you are reading a bastardized version. No, I have not conceded that. You've said it many times, I have not conceded it one time. The Bible, there's no perfect translation because we're translating from one language to the next. But just like you can go to Spain right now and use a translator to speak to someone who only speaks Spanish, I can have a Greek and Hebrew Bible translated into English and still understand it and get the message. It's a good thing I'm not communicating with God. Well, God understands all languages. Does he? Yes, he created all languages. Do so, you know there was one language? The whole world had one language until the Tower of Babel? The whole world had one language until the Tower of Babel. Well, the existence of other religions, I justify that by this. God has given men free will. Men have chosen to sin and become idolatrous. They've rejected God just like you've rejected God. They go become sinners. Well, but what comes out of your mouth shows me you, you believe that. So you just accuse me of something? That, uh, based upon what has come out of your mouth, so you're accusing me of something you don't know is a fact. I know it's a fact based upon what comes out of your mouth. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. Really? The Bible says, by your fruit you should know them, out of the mouth comes the overflow of the heart. And the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You speak filthy things about God's word. You said it's a bastardized version. And this is in the King James, New King James, and the King James is not that either. They're not that. They're translations of God's word. Do you know Greek? I don't. But okay. I know for a fact that it is originally written in Greek. Maybe the New Testament was. A bastardized New Testament was originally written in Greek. You you have wrong information. I don't know where you're getting it from. The Old Testament was originally written in Hebrew. You're making yourself look pretty ignorant right now, okay? Actually, I'm not. You are. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm just telling you the truth. You don't know what you're talking about. With a theology degree? Do I know? I have a theology degree. Where? Well, from Louisiana College. Louisiana College. You probably wouldn't know anything about that college. It's a small college in Louisiana. Is it accredited? Yes, it is. What's your question, man? Yeah, I saw that. I was Sure. Well, we're not talking about that. Obviously, there's there may be some good things that some Democrats do, but we're talking about Democrat the party as a whole stand up for things like abortion, which is the killing of unborn children. Which is completely abominable in God's sight. Completely abomination in God's sight. Oh no, that was, my friend was my friend who made that banner was saying I really need to put Republicans on this too. He was saying this earlier today. So he's not that's not an all inclusive list. 
it's a very it's a very small list of all the sinners who will go to hell. So, but we're just trying to be rel uh, relative to our crowd. We know college campus has a lot more Democrats usually than Republicans. So, we're trying to be you know relate to our crowd. And so, what does that mean? That means Democrat equals truth. I don't, I don't think, no offensively, but I don't think going to a public, public college campus gives you a higher education. Okay? It doesn't. I don't believe that at all. I mean, look what, it, look what it produces half the time. It produces a bunch of sinners who love to get drunk and party and, and fornicate. All kinds of stuff. That's what it produces usually. Wait a minute now. When have I ever stood up for any Christian college? Right? Yeah, and it produced you. Right? And that's the right thing to produce. Actually, 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 let me let me strike that. It didn't produce me. It, it wouldn't. It, it, that college wouldn't like me. It wouldn't like what I am. Because they're hypocrites. That's why. That's the answer. Sir, what is your purpose here exactly? To preach God's word to as many people as possible. Wait a minute. You asked me a question, and I'm answering it. Are you listening for the answer? Why am I here? Here's my answer. I'm here to preach the Word of God to as many people as possible. Now, how they respond is their own choice. You can respond in hatred. You can respond in flipping the preacher off and yelling and screaming at him. You can respond by listening carefully. You can respond by being under conviction. See? You can respond like that. I'm not going to stop. I can't stop her from responding that way. All I can do is preach God's Word and allow it to fall where it may. You can choose to repent and give your life to Jesus Christ. Or you can choose to keep being a sinner and go to hell in the end. That's your choice. There's no hatred here. From you guys, not from me. Your sign says you stop being sinners, but the truth is everyone is a sinner. Prove it. Prove it. Everyone is a sinner. Prove it. Where does it say that? Okay, just like you told the good man, I'll give you a list later because I don't know exactly. Well, everyone has sinned. That doesn't mean everyone's a sinner right now. Oh, have sinned, ED. Yeah, I agree with that. Past tense. But you need to stop. No, I'm not sinning right now. So you need to stop being a sinner. See, this young lady made a. She made a a, a uh, profession a second ago. She said everybody's a sinner. Now she has called all of you sinners. Even I haven't done that. She called everybody sinners. And there, you know, there's over seven billion people in this world. Seven billion people. And how many you know? Maybe ten thousand, maybe max. And you're saying everybody's a sinner? You don't even know that. You don't even know that. Huh? It says it. Where? We are trying to use a common Where does the Bible say that everyone is a sinner? Why would everyone have to accept Jesus Christ if he's not a sinner? Because everyone has sinned. Because everyone's a sinner. So now because you have repented, you are Jesus and you no longer sin. No, Jesus never sinned, so I couldn't be Jesus. Oh, okay. Okay. I know I'm a lot like him. I know you're, you're having problems that oh, differentiate between me and Jesus, because but I am not Jesus. I'm not even Jewish. I'm, a Gent I'm Irish. I'm a Gentile. But, but yeah, so not everyone's a sinner. Everyone has sinned, including me. I've sinned in the past. You have sinned. But, but I'm not sinning now, and I plan to never sin again. That's my plan. That's my hope. That's my purpose. Because I want to live for Jesus Christ. I want to obey Him and serve Him and follow Him. He died for me. He deserves my whole life. He deserves your whole life. But you refuse, most of you refuse to give it to Him. You refuse to give your life to Jesus Christ because you love your sin and you hate God. You don't, esteem, you don't esteem the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Instead, you esteem your sin. And you glorify your sin. Lift up your sin. I don't take, I don't take a, instructions from you, sinner. Psalm 1-1. One, one, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. I don't take your counsel. No. 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 You can walk away if you want. So God commands all men everywhere to repent. I just, you didn't, you, did you hear my explanation a second ago? No, you didn't. You're not listening. Everyone has sinned. I agree with that. I'm not a sinner. I'm a Christian. You haven't proved I'm a sinner. And you can't prove everyone else is a sinner unless you're God. And none of you are God. No one of you are God, so you don't know if everyone, all 7 billion people in the world are sinners. 
I'll tell you right now, I'm not a sinner. He's not a sinner. He's not a sinner. Those guys over there, they're not sinners. Why are they gay sinners? Because they're Christians. That's why. Why are the gay sinners? Why are, why are happy people sinners? Why are homosexual sinners? Sodomites are sinners because they're sodomizing each other. It's common sense. You're doing what's against nature. It's unnatural. It's shameful. It's vile. What's so shameful about it? You tried some time I'll be judged according to my works. Yeah, I'll be judged and rewarded from God. I won't be judged heaven or hell because I'm, I'm right with God. I have forgiveness from God, but I'll be judged according to my works. But sinners will be judged for and go to hell. That's the difference. No. I didn't say I was God. Never claimed to be God. Says who? Where does God say that? Uh, Where does God say I can't judge? Where does God say I can't judge? It's not there. Uh, you know, First Corinthians chapter two. Hold on. We'll get back to you in a second. I'm not. I'm not. I'll get to you in a second. The Bible knows that you can't judge. Go ahead. You are all infected and impure with sin. When we display our righteous deeds, they are nothing but filthy rags, like autumn leaves. We wither and fall. Who's it talking about? Who's it talking about? Who's it talking about? You. Us. No, it's talking about Jewish people who are at that point in time. That's what it's talking about. Isaiah's prophesying to the Jews. They would do religious things like offer sacrifices. They would take part in the festivals. Are you listening, young man? Are you listening, young man? Are you listening, young man? They would take part in the festivals and they would, stay, and they would still be living in sin. Now, if you're a religious Christian, you think you can live in sin and be holy? That's who it applies to right there. That's the exact kind of person it's talking about. I'm not that person. I obey God. You know what? The Bible's in Genesis chapter uh, chapter 6. It says, and this is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man. Perfect in his generations, Noah walked with God. In Job chapter 1, Job is called perfect several times. Uh, John the Baptist's parents, Zacharias and Elizabeth. It says about them, they kept all the commandments of God blamelessly. Now tell me everyone's a sinner again. No, not everyone's a sinner. Everyone has sinned. I agree with that. No, not everyone's a sinner. There are saints of God. There are people who are saints. Paul to the saints of Corinth, the saints of Colossae. The, people, the word saint means holy one. People who are holy. They were obeying God and living for him keeping his commandments. But if you're not doing that, you're not a saint. You are a sinner. You need to become a saint. Stop being a sinner. Become a former sinner today. Obey Jesus who said, go and sin no more. Are you wearing mixed fabric clothing? I'm not wearing linen and wool, which is what that Bible verse says, and I'm not a Jew either. Hold on. Oh, you got caught in your trap, didn't you? So anyway, the Bible says... That's not taking out of context. You, you, sir, you take little verses. Show me what I'm taking out of context, Bible scholar. Show me one thing I'm taking out of context. You have a problem. You said Give me the Bible verse. You make the accusation. Give me the Bible verse I've taken. Bible verse that you have to Give me an example. Out of a bigger passage. Right. Right. Out of a big scientific theory and say it's okay. I still have a problem. You're not making any sense. Didn't look hard enough. I went to prison for seven years. My thought there was something wrong with me because I couldn't believe it. So recently, I finally accepted it. No, it's not that you can't believe it. You refuse to believe it. I tried so hard. I really did. I thought there was something wrong with me. No. Well, young lady, there is something wrong with you. You're a sinner. And here's the reason why you need Jesus Christ. Because you're a sinner deserving of hell. You're under God's judgment and under God's wrath. And God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die for you on the cross that you might not that you might be saved. That you might not be a sinner any longer. That you might have eternal life. That's why you need Jesus Christ. Question, you need a Savior from your sins. You, are you, to point us out. you need Jesus Christ. That stupid little thing doesn't even exist. Flying spaghetti monster nonsense. You're, that's historical revisionism. Even secular historians will admit that Jesus Christ exists. Wait a minute now. Jesus Christ made lots of claims about himself. And all of them were claims of, were claims of deity, him being a higher being than a human being. 
And these are things that he claimed about himself. So you have three options. Either he was a liar, a pathological liar, he was a lunatic, thought he was God, but he really wasn't, and he really is Lord. So if you want to call Jesus Christ a liar and a lunatic, it's on you. But Jesus Christ is Lord, and he's coming back to judge the world, including you. Jesus is a collection of several different people. That's nonsense. Does this thing is Horus? You know, you know what you ought to watch? I'm not, I'm not going to get into this big old theory on this nonsense. You ought to watch, you ought to watch Zeitgeist Refuted Religious Portion on, on YouTube. It's a two, about an hour or two long video. Refutes all these nonsense claims you people try to make about, you know, Jesus being a mythical figure, figure coming barring from other religions like Horus and Ira. You know, it's just nonsense. Study it for yourself, young man. Re watch it on YouTube. It's on my YouTube channel. Zeitgeist Refuted Religious Portion. You cannot, you don't argue history with me. You Why? You can't be wrong? No. You're all knowing? Yes. You're a fool. That's what you are. You're a fool. You're not all knowing. You, you claim yourself that you are not a sinner. That's right. And the Bible clearly states that we all fall short of the glory of God. What, is, what does that mean? What, what, what does that mean? What is, what is, what, hold on a second, what is, hold on a second, you're not explaining what you mean. What do you mean by false or the glory of God? That means that you will not, you cannot live without sin. That's not what that means. Yes, it No, it isn't. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 5, 48, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. You want to bring up Wait a minute now, let's deal with that. Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Hey, 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 wait a minute. Read Matthew 7, 5, 4. What's that? Read Matthew 7, 5. I know Matthew 7, 5. took a plank of iron a long time ago. Nobody, what, why don't you, why don't you... Now, wait a minute now. If Jesus is admonishing people to take planks out of their eyes so they can see clearly to take the speck out of their brother's eye, are you telling me it's impossible? That Jesus Christ is commanding the impossible? That you... Yes. Well, why would Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, tell you to be perfect, to stop sinning? Why would he have to sin, Jesus? Because we have sinned. That doesn't have to keep on sinning. But because you have sinned. You cannot, you cannot live. Listen, if, if, if you couldn't, if you couldn't but sin, if you couldn't but sin, God would be unjust in condemning you for your sin. You'd have an excuse on judgment day. But that's not what the case is. See, the problem is you think you have a lack of ability. Your problem is a lack of willingness. You're not willing to stop sinning. There's not one sin in this world you can't stop doing. There's not one sin in the world you can't give up for the glory of God, or the power of God, or the power of the Holy Spirit. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Is that what the Bible says? If you walk according to the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Is that what the Bible says? You know, it really doesn't do any good to call people sinners who don't believe in sin. Yeah, it does. I'll tell you truth about yourself whether you believe it or not. But Matthew 5, hold on, Matthew 5.48 says, once again, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Deal with it. Jesus commands you, young man, to be perfect. And you refuse to give it to him. You don't... I never refused anything. Yeah, you did. You said you can't stop sinning. You're refusing it. I never said I cannot stop sinning. I said that we... Young man, you're a walking contradiction. You said it several times. You said we have to always be sinners. We will, all, we will all fall short of the glory of God. Which, and then he said you, you translated that or interpreted it to mean that we can't stop sinning ever on this earth. I never said, I never said that. I said that we will, ne we, we will never be perfect Why? Beings. Why? Because, because we cannot live up to God's expectations. You just said it. Now you're saying you you just said it again. The very thing you're saying you're not saying, you're saying now. Because we're flawed just like The whole time. time. You are saying that. You're saying you can't. God's saying you should. You There's a disconnect there, young man. You disconnect. Perfect? There's a why you're missing there. You can. You refuse to. That's your problem. Are you perfect? In Christ, yes. I have my past sins forgiven. Hold on a second. I'll determine what I, what I believe and what I mean by it, not you. It's a matter of perspective, apparently. Well, I'm going to give you my perspective. Because so, so the Bible says that, that, that Paul labored to present every man perfect in Christ, Colossians 1.28. So I am perfect in Christ, and that, what that means is this. My past sins, which I have a lot of them, they're forgiven. Okay. God has cleansed me of those things. But now I'm walking in obedience to God. It doesn't mean you can't fuck up again. I didn't say I couldn't. I said I'm not. I have a question. Uh, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 7 is this. Little children, let no one deceive you. 
Whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. See, Jesus Christ didn't come to die on a cross so you can celebrate Easter and have Easter egg hunts. He didn't die on a cross so you can wear a cross around your necklace. Jesus Christ died on the cross not just to forgive you of your sin to deliver you from hell, but to destroy the works of the devil in your life, your sin. Destroy it. What's your questions? One at a time. Yes. And please wait for the answer. Are there yes or no questions? Okay, that's good. So, King David, was he a righteous man? Well, it's, sometimes he was. Sometimes he was. Was he a righteous man? You, no, wait a minute now. I'm not going to give you a yes or no answer if not a yes or no answer. It is a yes or no answer. No, it is not a yes or no answer. He, at one point in time, in 1 Samuel 16, he was a man after God's own heart. That's the whole reason he was chosen to be king of Israel. But, but then he chose to sin. Okay. The, the, the guy said, that, I just responded to the guy a second, does not mean just because I'm righteous now that I have to continue to be righteous, or that I can't sin again in the future, or that I'm not tempted. David was tempted and he gave in to sin. Simply put. No, you're not forgiven in your sins. You are not forgiven of your sins while you're in your sins. Forgiveness requires repentance. Forgiveness requires confession. Read 1 John 1.9. If, if, if you can claim that everyone is perfect, then there would be no need for Jesus to have died on the No, no, you see, I've already responded to that. You need Jesus Christ. The reason he died on the cross was because you have sinned. Now, hold on, hold on. Listen to what I'm saying. Because you have sinned. Not because you have to sin, not because you have to continue sinning, but because you have sinned. And, it, and after that, you still need Jesus while you're living holy, because I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So just because I'm not sinning does not mean I don't need Jesus. That's nonsense. That's just using Jesus to for, for forgiveness. He's, he's useful for more than just forgiveness. He wants to lead you into all truth. And let me ask you this. If you say you're following Jesus Christ, will Jesus Christ lead you to sin? No. Okay, so if you're sinning, are you following Jesus? We're, we're human. If you're sinning, are you following Jesus? No, wait a minute now. You're not answering the question. If you're sinning, are you following Jesus? Impossible. You can't sin and follow Jesus at the same time. You followed Jesus and you messed up and then you repented. You weren't following Jesus when you were sinning. I don't need some book Because Jesus did not lead you to sin. Does the Holy Spirit lead you to sin? He doesn't. Okay, so that if, if, you're, if you're sinning, are you following the leading of the Holy Spirit? No, we're humans. We're blessed. We're Being a human does not mean anything. You're made in God's image. Being a human does not mean you have to sin. Everyone has sinned, I agree. That means you have to keep on sinning. At je jealousy... Hold on a second. You're answering a bunch. Of, you're asking a bunch of questions. Let me answer. Jealousy is, is not always a sin. If I, if I have jealousy for a man who's being improper towards my wife, it's not sinful. No, it's not, because she's my wife. Yeah, but if I have jealousy in other ways, it could be sinful. Yes, but you know, all souls are God's, so there's a right to be jealous over them, because they belong to Him. He made them. He knitted them together in, his, in their mother's womb. First John 1 9. I don't need some book written thousands of years ago. Romans 5 8 says, But God shows his love for us, so while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. Right? Continue on. Continue on. No, you were saying forgiveness is not extended to people who are still in sin. Christ died for us. That doesn't mean you're forgiven. Does that mean everybody? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How many, you, how many people did Jesus die for? Everybody. Is everyone forgiven? No. Oh, there you go. So you have a disconnect. Just because Jesus died for you does not mean you're automatically forgiven. Yes, Christ died. Christ died for all ungodly people. But there are conditions for you to be forgiven. You must repent, believe, and then obey. We're still forgiven. We just have to accept it. No, wrong, wrong. The Bible never says that. Find a Bible verse for that, young man. We're already forgiven. Just accept it. The Bible never says that. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, a verse I've been trying to get you to read. That you refuse to read. First John, the back of the Bible. First John chapter one verse nine says this: If we confess our sins, if to the if there conditional statement, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
So the condition of being forgiven and cleansed from all unrighteousness is what? Confessing. And the Greek word for confession there is homologeo, and it means to agree with God. So you need to agree with God about your sin. And until you do that, you have no forgiveness. You have no cleansing. But that doesn't necessarily mean we stop I have a question. Sinning. How can you keep on sinning and agree with God about your sin? You can't live a because lifestyle of sin. sin. Yeah, you don't live a lifestyle you, of sin. The Bible never says to accept your sin. It says to repent of your sin. I, yeah. Forsake your sin. believe that you sin in order to repent again. Right? But if you're still in sin, you haven't repented of it. You're unrepentant while you're in sin. Yes, that's what the, that's, that's very... Yes, you're, so you're repentant while you're sinning? No way, the enemy never... You're repentant of, 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 for, of uh, fornication while you're fornicating? You're repentant of drunkenness while you're getting drunk? What, what kind of books are you trusting in? Why are you here at this school then? You're paying to go to this school and you're reading the books here and you're trusting in them. Because that's proven research. I'm not Oh, proven research. I'm not trusting Proven research. Those are big words. I'm not trusting them for my morality. Like you I don't But where's your morality come from then? Conscience. Where'd your conscience come from? Evolution of the brain. So why are people have different consciences? Because Why do people have different versions of morality? Hold on a second. Wait a minute now. If we all evolve from the same beings, we should have the same morality. But you don't believe the same thing I believe. Well, why, why is he a different color than you are? What's that? Why is he a different color than you are? That's just DNA. That's the same thing as evolution? No, it's not. DNA is millions and millions of books of information, these little strands. That's not the same as evolution. Blind, random chance. Not even close. But when it comes to morality, if you have no God, you have no absolute morality. All you have is what I, what I think, what I like and what I don't like. There is no such thing. There's no such thing as an absolute standard unless you have an absolute standard giver. No, you don't. No, you don't because you admitted a minute ago that people have different forms of morality than you. So it's not absolute. What's the source? What's the source? My conscience. And and where was your conscience before you were alive? What is yours? And and who and who was the and who was the absolute standard of morality before you were around? I don't think there's one specific. There's no standard. Well, then it's not absolute. What is your? It's relative still. You still have rel You say it's right for me. It's it, whatever you think is right for him. That's not absolute. That's relative. What about rationality? Like what? Wait a minute now. Not everybody agrees with that. So you're going to tell the person who kills they're wrong? And what standard are you going to appeal to? What? My heart, my conscience. But once again, before you were around, who was the absolute standard of right and wrong then? There is none. Well, are you absolutely sure about that? Yeah. Well, you defeated yourself then. No, every, everyone is... You just defeated yourself. You said there's no absolute formal morality, which is an absolute statement. I said no absolutes there. Which is an absolute statement. Is that absolutely true? See, you defeated yourself. You're, you're, you're getting it. It's kind of the light bulb coming on, I think. You made an absolute statement saying there are no absolutes. That's an absolute statement. That's a self-defeating statement. And you can't say that and the statement be true at the same time. Have you ever been to college? I have a four-year degree, young man. Turn from where? What does it matter? Because you're retarded, and I want to know what institution gave you a degree. So is a sinner. Of course a sinner's going to think I'm retarded. Oh, wow, I don't agree with you, so I'm a sinner now. No, no, the words that come out of your mouth prove you're a sinner. Let's see someone else wants to preach. I don't want to. The words that came out of his mouth. What comes out of my mouth? The words that come out of your mouth prove you're a sinner. Oh, cocks come out of my mouth. See? Comes out eventually. Wow. Sodomite, come out eventually. You're a pervert, man. I am you're corrupted. a pervert, dude. Come on. At least you're willing to admit it. That's good. That's the first step and change. First step. You're not my bro. You're not my bro. Bro. Well, he's my bro in the human sense, but not in the spiritual sense. Well, that's not what I mean by spiritual, young man. Are you, are you a Christian? Not at all. That's what I thought. I knew it. You're confirming with your mouth now. 
Now, the Bible says in 1 John 3.10, And this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he does not love his brother. So you're a child of the devil. That's cool. Damn. No, it's not cool because he hates you. You're going to go to hell with him if you don't repent. Actually, did we complete? Yeah? If we sin willfully after we receive knowledge of the truth, there's no longer. I have a question about that. Let's say there's a person that is just um, starting to walk in their Christianity. Yeah. And let's say God hasn't completely cleansed them of all of their righteousness yet. Let's say I have a cussing problem and I'm just coming to Christianity. Does that mean I'm no longer saved or I'm not perfect because God is still working on me? Well, I think a lot of things you said are just not uh, not accurate according. I understand what you're asking, man. Let me respond to it, okay? I think a lot of things you're saying are not accurate according. I just read to you First John one nine. It says if you confess your sins, He is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. But if you don't come to Him and confess all your sins and forsake all your sins, you can't be cleansed of it. Which means you can't. Be well, what do you mean by that, man? You, you're perfect in this sense that the day you become a Christian. In this sense. You've forsaken everything you know you shouldn't be doing, and everything you know you shouldn't be doing, you're going to start doing. But that's, 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 called, oh, that's called repentance. And so, God's holding you accountable according to your knowledge. So if that's what you're doing, God sees you as clean before Him. Okay? But if you're doing things you know you shouldn't be doing, you're unclean before Him. Whether it's cussing, or fornication, or porn watching, whatever it is, God expects you to stop all of it. Okay? So, and you can. The Bible says, it, look, listen, young man, you got to pluck out the eye. You know, if, if, say for example, I know porn's a big thing for men, okay? If we're watching pornography, get rid of the computer, get rid of the internet, get rid of your smartphone, get rid of your TV if you have to. Because it's not serious, man. It's going to cost you your soul. And so, and, and the Bible says, no temptation is overtaking you except such as is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able, but with the temptation will make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. So you can, every time temptation comes, you draw near to God, you submit yourself to God, you resist the devil, and he will flee from you. But do you feel that if you, if, let's say you fall into direct temptation, do you believe in grace and that God can forgive you? And yeah, of course he can. Okay. 1 John 2, 1 says... So the um, question is, if, if you're going to be out here Chris, uh, preaching to people, why don't you preach that? that you well, I do preach that, but I'm responding to the crowd, man. I've been answering lots of questions lately. But when, but, when I, but when I preach, when I preach, I preach the whole counsel of God. But, but the Bible says God opposes the pride, gives grace to the humble. I have found very few humble people here today. If I found more, I'd give them more grace. But God opposed the pride, so I gave him law, I gave him judgment, I gave him hell, because that's what Jesus did. When Jesus ran to the proud Pharisees, he gave them a lot of judgment and condemnation. When he ran to the humble woman at the, at the well, he gave her grace. And so that, that's the way I deal with it too. Uh, so right now I've been answering a lot of questions. But when I preach, I preach the whole council. I preach on the mercy of God. Well, so does you. I, I, I answer a lot of the questions, but I, I preach the whole council of God. But 1 John 2, 1 says, my, my brethren, I write these things to you that you may not sin. So every Christian, their mind says to me, I'm not going to sin ever again. That should be your mindset. I'm not going to sin ever again. And then it says, and, so that if anyone sins... Must be in kindergarten. So I was saying, if anyone sins, see the difference there? No, I'm going to sin. I can't stop sinning. If anyone sins, he has the advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. But you must humble yourself, repent, confess and repent, and start walking in truth again. So you can't, you, there's a difference between trampling the blood of Jesus Christ on the foot. Oh, I'm going to sin every day. I can't help it. I can't stop it. And someone's saying, well, I could stumble. And being humble about themselves, but I'm I'm striving to never sin again, and I know it's possible. That, right, that, that is our goal as Christians. So my thing is. But 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 knowing it's possible too. If we don't think it's possible, you'll never do it. But to non-Christians, people who have never heard the gospel, if you come out here yelling insults, they're never gonna. I'm not yelling insults. I'm not yelling one insult yet. If I wasn't a Christian, I wouldn't have. Well, listen, listen. The the carnal mind is enmity against God. So the carnal mind is not going to like the word of God? Of course not. But, but the fact is, I'm going to preach the whole counsel of God, whether they respond in animosity, they respond in liking it. Well, I'm not here to make you feel the love of Jesus. The, the, the pe people didn't feel Jesus' love a lot of times. So it's called tough... Are you serious? 
Where does the Bible say Jesus felt people, uh, people felt Jesus' love? Jesus was never to the point where he was. Wait a minute, hold on a second. Give me an answer to this question. Where does the Bible say people felt Jesus' love? You have to because Jesus showed his love. That's what I'm doing. No, you're not. Yes, I am. So says you. That's what I'm doing. How can you? Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. How do you, if I'm not showing love, please tell me how someone should show love. My thing is, you care for those. No, my I'm caring for you right now. I get you're what you're doing. You're caring for us by pointing our, your finger at us, calling us sinners. I'm sorry. Aren't you a sinner? Yeah, I am. Then what's the problem? This is I, how I, I feel about it. Then what's the problem? But you know what? You're, I'm not going to come to terms with what you believe by you telling me in anger. In I'm not anger. angry. You are not angry. angry. Well, so says you. What's, so so says my thing I. is, yeah. let's say, for instance, I can understand you talking to me like that because I claim to believe in Jesus and I try to follow his word. But how can you tell someone they're going to hell if they've never accepted Jesus? That's not Because that's what the Bible says. I'm a Bible preacher. The Bible says the first Corinthians have been, Why are you so, so surprised, young man? Do you read the Bible? I read it and I can't. Okay, well, well let's deal with 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. You, you about ready, brother? Sir. Or, Okay. Hold on one second. I'm going to do this one Bible verse, and he's going to preach next. You can talk to him. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. Do not be deceived. Do you not know the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor drunkards, nor thieves, nor revelers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, so I'm going to preach that Bible verse to fornicators, to idolaters. I don't have to preach John 3.16 every time I come out. Where does the Bible say every time you go preaching, preach John 3.16? You have to convert people first before you repent. No, that's not true. The Bible never says that. You want the amp of it? Okay. I've already taken the log of my a long time ago. So I'm fit, according to Matthew. Yes, really, according to Matthew, if I'm fit. Ever, ever yeah. have impure thoughts no. or anything. Yeah. I obey God. Yeah. See, no, I'm a Christian yeah. too. Well, I don't think you are. And I, no, I. Am. Not according to what you're saying. No, I completely. Can agree. someone take the log out of their eye? Sorry. Can someone take the log out of their eye? No. So Jesus tells you to do something you can't stop doing. So that tells me you're not a Christian because you still have a log in your eye. You're a hypocrite. I preach knowing that I'm a hypocrite. I know I'm not a good person.